I'm Ann Kennedy. I'm here at SES London with Bill Hunt. Bill, you just did a presentation on uh, uh, key points of launching a global campaign. Do you want to say what the top three key points are? Yeah, it was just we try to debunk some of the myths about hosting and, and uh, different ways with top-level domains, things like that. One, I think, was uh, really understand your keywords. What are people searching for in that market? Just don't translate them. Two, make sure you've got you know, relevant content for a particular market. Um, and then three was you know, from an idea of linking. Try to get links if you have a German website, links from Germany um, or you know, .de websites instead of all of them coming from the U.S. Now, you've worked with a lot of really big sites, really big global sites, uh, top brand names, IBM, P&G. Um, what do you find the challenges working in an uh, enterprise that large? Probably the biggest challenge is integrating these practices into the content creation workflow, getting people to understand the value. Um, getting, you know, there's always limited resources in every market. So that's, they're doing 10, 20, 30 things already, adding yet one more to it. And that's why I think things like creating a missed opportunity matrix or some way to show the value of doing this is, is probably the key to success. And when it comes to doing SEO oh, I'm on the multicultural, multilingual websites, how is it different from a straightforward English SEO? I think it's, it's the same. I mean, if you break the components down into two sides, there's the infrastructure side, which has no difference, irregardless of language. Um, and then there's the linguistic side, which is the language part. So I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in fixing a template in whatever market and pushing that optimized template out to all the other markets. And you're about 80% there. All you have left is to tune the language side and get links to it. And uh, you should be pretty much good to go. Now, with links, we're talking about local links. Is that right? Local links to the local site. Absolutely. I mean, we find a lot of people will use a link building company that will go out and, and get a bunch of links for you. And it's easy to get them from .com websites hosted in the U.S. And so it looks pretty suspicious if you have a German language or French language or Chinese language site and all of your links are from English language sites in the U.S. Um, it just doesn't look natural. So you definitely want people that can secure links in that local market from local domains. Um, and that helps uh, considerably. Now, when we're talking about domains, there is always controversy over whether it should be .com, local domain, subdomain, or uh, directory. What, give us a rundown of your opinion on those. Sure. I mean, if you can have a top-level domain like mycompany.co.uk, then go for it. That's obviously the best recommendation. There's no ambiguity of where it is. .com, like becoming like .tv and those, those are global. They're actually not U.S. Um, so the engines don't know where to attribute that. So if you're in the UK, you host a .com in the US, it looks like a US site. But having a .co.uk is truly a UK website. So we can do that. Big companies, again, we have a big problem with cost. We can't always, you know, it's between thirty dollars to $100,000 a year to maintain a separate top-level domain um, at that level of infrastructure. So it's not always feasible. So definitely we'd want to use uh, country, you know, my whatevercompany.com slash country code and use Google Webmaster Tools to set that um, as a preference. You don't get any value using subdomains. We used to be able to get multiple listings when we did that. Um, Google's taken that away from us. So use top-level domain when you can. Uh, when it's cost prohibitive, use um, dom, you know, .com uh, slash country code and, you, and set that in Webmaster Tools, you'll be good. Okay, and centralized management or local teams or a combination of both? I like a hybrid. I like, um, you know, guidance. You know, I call it a search center of excellence. So things like global KPIs, best practices, um, protocols should come from the, the top level. Um, but then, you know, add in a local flavor. Let the local people understand their market. They understand the content that's being there. So I think the hybrid's the right way to go. So you have, have sold your company twice, and you are now doing uh, Back Azimuth Consulting, and that's been about a year now, I think? Yep, 18, yeah. How's it going, and what's next? It's doing well. I mean, we're really focused um, on, on really trying to understand the voice of the consumer. So we're building some, some keyword management tools where we can really mine keyword data. And then we're folding in conversational mining data. So we get the best of both. What are they searching for? And more importantly, what are they talking about? And we're finding that we blend that data and we feed it back to companies. It creates a pretty dynamic environment for content creation. So that's what I think is the next generation. Everybody talks about the semantic web and semantic search and, 
Semantic is a fancy way of saying what's the meaning. Um, so what do people want? Why do they want it? And what content can we create that intersects with that interest and, and uh, intent for doing a query? And that's what we're trying to build tools around that. So we can mine that, help large companies basically, um, you know, realign their content creation process. So man's search for meaning goes online. Thank you, Bill. It's great to talk to you as always. This is Ann Kennedy for SES London.